Hello, everybody. Oh, wait, no. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and welcome to this video where today we are going to learn if it is important to answer the question. Okay. Now, if you watched my video on um, the Big Bang Bump and how will they or won't they affects long-term storytelling. Um, this video is going to talk more about that. And I'll put that video here, okay? If you missed that video, okay? Because there's some good shit in there, guys. But what I wanted to talk about is th there were a lot more examples that I wanted to use to explain the answering the question, will they or won't they, solving the mystery, the whole deal. Because there are a lot of examples that I didn't want to just keep getting into when we were talking about the Big Bang Bump because that was a very specific event and I wanted to just talk about that. So there are a lot of things and I feel like... Okay, so for instance, if you are a romance writer or you're trying to write romance novels and your books aren't selling and you're getting bad reviews, okay, this information's for you. If you write mystery novels, okay, and your novels aren't selling and they're getting bad reviews and you don't understand why, okay, anything like that, um, this is going to help. Okay, and I'm going to give you examples from television, from comic books, and from my own work. Okay, first off, the way the world is, okay, there's something that you have to give to the readers based off of genre expectations. Okay, now a lot of us feel like oh, you know what? Everyone's going to expect this, so I'm going to pull the rug out from under them and do this, and it's going to be huge. And people will be so shocked at what they're reading that they're going to just be like, what? Oh my gosh. And do all that shit. That is not the way to go. Okay? Nobody wants to be shocked. The, and some of you watching this are going to go, well, I, I love being shocked. I love subverting expectations when I read. Okay, great. You are a genius and you are in the very, very small minority of the situation, of the population. Okay. Because most people read something and they want to be able to put the story together in their head and they want to be right they want to feel good when they're reading something. They could have some like ups and downs and stuff, but at the end of that book, they need to feel good. And a prime example of this is fucking Twilight, okay? When you read the Stephanie Meyer Twilight novels, you can read a page of that book and go, I bet this is going to happen on the next page. And then you turn the page and you start reading the very simple prose and go, oh my God, I was right. This is so exciting. Oh my gosh. Like, I'm so smart. Look at how smart I am, everybody. Ah. And they get all excited. That's why Twilight was a fucking success. Because it was the most basic ass storytelling. And very, very predictable. Okay? That's what the majority of readers and the majority of viewers want from the stuff they consume they don't want to be subverted okay so the question that i posed in that other video was when you answer the question of will they or won't they if you have like a romance brewing in your book or your story or your tv show or your movie or whatever this will they or won't they thing becomes a really big deal. And all the other stuff that happens on the show or in the book or whatever is going to be like, oh, this is kind of fun. This is kind of exciting. But like, what's going on with that romance? Are they going to hook up at the end? Like, there's probably a ton of shows that you've watched where the show will be about one thing. Okay. But there will be like one point in each episode 
where that one couple that might be a couple almost kisses or almost says how they feel or um, it's just a little fucking nibble for you to be like, oh my God, to keep you on the hook. So you'll watch the next episode. Okay. Or read the next portion of the thing or whatever. Who fucking cares? Whatever. Okay. Now, this isn't just a romance thing. The same can be said with shows with really long arcs that have a mystery in it. Okay. And the best example of this is Twin Peaks. Okay. Who killed Laura Palmer? That is the question that is asked at the beginning of the first fucking episode. You find Laura Palmer's body, the cops show up, and suddenly we have to figure out who killed Laura Palmer. Okay. The whole first season goes by and they don't answer the question. The second season was broken up into two parts. Okay. So the whole second season, whole first part of the second season goes by and they weren't going to answer the question and then the network's like you have to answer the question like people are dying to know who killed laura palmer and they were like if we say who killed laura palmer the show's dead and they're like no 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 no, you have to do it so the network forced them to answer the question of who killed laura palmer and then guess what happened as soon as people found out nobody gave a shit anymore okay Another example, Batman, the comic book. You guys are like, oh, shit, he's going to Batman now? He's fucking... <laughs> okay, so um, Tom King's run on Batman, okay? The will they or won't they with Batman and Catwoman, okay? It was going up to the marriage of Bat and Cat, okay? Issue 50, Rebirth, okay? They make the decision to do the thing, which I'm not going to tell you in case you give a shit and want to look into it. What happens after the decision is made? Okay. Now there was a lot more to that than just making the decision because that by that point and what happened after Batman was kind of a shit show, but whatever. So this thing is a big deal. Once you give, so think about the big project you're working on right now. What is the question that your audience is going to be asking? What is the question that your audience is going to be trying to figure out through the whole thing? Okay. Figure out what that is and then do everything you can to never pay that off until you're going to be done with the project. And then once you do decide to pay that off, just know That from then on out, everything's going to be like this. Okay? It's just how it is. Now, some of you might be going, well, soap operas are up and down. And that's true. And what happens is there's going to be a big down. And then you have to create a new question. And like even with wrestling and even with comic books, there are different arcs that come and go. Okay? So whenever you bring one of those new arcs in... There has to be a question that needs to be answered. There has to be something that the reader can like latch onto and feel like they're playing a part of that thing. Okay. And if you don't have that, that's going to fall flat. Like if you're just telling a story, it's going to fall flat. Okay. So like for most mysteries, okay. A lot of, like, when you're watching TV shows, and some books are like this too, but when you're watching TV shows, you usually see the crime or the aftermath of a crime, and then the investigator or whoever, the sleuth, will come in and try to solve the crime, okay? And that's how mysteries work. If you remember Columbo, um, the difference with Columbo was on Columbo, you saw who committed the crime at the beginning of the episode. You saw who did it. And the big, like, exciting thing for that was how was Columbo going to, like, figure out who did it and then trick the person into confessing kind of deal, you know? 
Like, so whatever your hook is, you have to do that. But guess what you also have to do? At the end of each thing, you need to pay that off. And it has to be paid off to the point where the viewer or the reader feels like they played a part in it and they feel good about it. So to give you an example of how not to do this, I'm going to talk about Black Star Canyon, the book series I wrote um, that was probably the biggest selling like series I ever did. Um, the thing about Black Star was when I originally put this together, it was a TV show pilot. Okay. And so the first book, the first actual novel, the collected serials of that first thing, that first season, that was really just the pilot script. Okay. So what that big ass book did was just set up a bunch of shit. I never intended on paying anything off. And all that book did was ask a bunch of questions, put people in a lot of fucked up positions, and pay absolutely nothing off at all. And the problem was with my reviews, and I thought, I'm like, oh, this is cool. This is subverting expectations. This is just going to make everyone really want to get the next book to find out what happens next. People did. But a lot of people fell off. And the reason is, is because I, I broke trust with my readers by not giving them a payoff at all. None of the characters had payoffs. Every single character, like, fucking, <laughs> were, were in a much worse situation than they were when the whole thing started. Now, some of you might be going, but, you know, that's just kind of how like storytelling is, isn't it? Like cliffhangers are good. Cliffhangers are good. But let me explain something to you. Harry Potter. A lot of you motherfuckers have read Harry Potter. Now, Harry Potter, in each one of those books, there is a story arc, okay, that Harry needs to figure out. And he needs to come up on top somehow, okay? And usually, by the end, he pulls it together and everything's fine. But there's this big overarching thing with Voldemort, okay? And usually by the end of each book, even though something happened that was really good, there's this fucking ominous looming shit. And there's going to be this moment where it's like, yeah, we won today, but are we going to win tomorrow? I don't know. But let's celebrate anyway. Yay, we're kids. Woo! Okay. And that's how you do it. That's the way to um, continue something. So if you do not want to answer a question, you need to have a bunch of heavy, big questions that people will like sink their teeth into and latch onto and have that be enough. Okay? You can't just not give them anything. And you can't just answer the question because as soon as Harry and Voldemort fucking go toe to toe, what else is there to do? Nothing. That's why there's no more fucking Harry Potter books. Okay. There's nothing else to do. Okay. That's why in the Legend of Zelda games, fucking like Link and Zelda, everything's fine. They defeat Ganon, but guess what? Oh no, Ganon's coming back. Okay. Well, that's weird. You know, and then if you like even look and even though this is a different thing altogether, but Mario and Bowser, okay, uh, Super Mario Brothers 2, which wasn't even supposed to be a Super Mario game. I get it, but understand my situation here. There was no Bowser. He had to fight Wart. That's not exciting. That wasn't as fun. But guess what? Bowser's coming back in Mario 3 because Bowser was never not supposed to be there. But you understand what I'm saying. Okay. So, <clears throat> I don't know if any of this is, like, helpful. Like, I'm being distracted by ice cream trucks and shit here. <sighs> but you just have to understand that subverting expectations is not always the best thing, even though hardcore readers like you like 
when the expectations are subverted. Everybody else hates it. They want simple and they want fucking cookie cutter and they want to just be entertained and be a part of it. So if you are writing books to make money, make sure you're paying everything off and making people feel good. If you don't want to make money and you want to fuck with people, subvert expectations all fucking day long. Okay? So that's that. Type art, everybody. Keep buying my books, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Creo and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Creo, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.